Okay. So we've got this photo, okay, which has a whole bunch of problems. One of them, we've got to separate it from the background. I want you to use the pin tool to do that, okay? Yes, the object selection tool would probably would do a decent job on it, but I want you to start getting hand, uh, good with the pin tool, okay? And I'll show you in a second what we're going to do there. Um, it's also got a little bit of, okay, so it looks like the, the whoever took this picture came really close in on it and hit it with a flash. It looks like they took it from like a foot away. So it blows out this side over here. It also forces the perspective too much over here. You know, and, it, and it's just, it's an old schmutzy camera that's kind of beat up. So we're going to kind of clean it up. So first thing we got to do, and I'll show you in a second, is to get it separated, okay, like that, okay? Then what we're going to do, eventually we'll give it a seamless backdrop, okay? We will give it a shadow, and this is all from a demo, so I would do it a lot cleaner than this. Uh, I changed the lens, that's right here. I changed it to a one color thing. What else will do? These clean up the edges here. So I've got some layers going on here. I put a little highlight right there. So what I'm trying to do is get it down to, um, it's still too blown out on this side, is get it down to uh, something workable, okay, where I can start creating the, 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 um, the lighting the way I want it, things like that. So I would come in here, here's what I would do. I would come in here, get nice and close, I would get my pin tool. And I would come up here and I would start separating this thing. And you got to be really careful because I get people all the time, they do this and they do really a half-ass job on it. And you can't do that. You got to, you know, get used to doing, using these tools. Otherwise, you know, you can't try and rely on automatic tools all the time. That's what I'm saying. And then let's say... that I get this all outlined, and then I'd have to come in here also and get rid of that little spot in there. Make sure you bump out here nice. Now what I'm not gonna get crazy about, make sure that you see that there. Sometimes people miss this. This is actually part of the camera. I'm not gonna get totally crazy about each one of these little things, but I would, actually if it was me, I would do it. Um, you know, but especially this kind of thing. These little, little divots here, I'm not gonna worry too much about. And then I get it here. And one of the first things I would do here, I'm going to turn off all this stuff that I did to it. What I would do, so this seamless right here, what I did was, is I went up here and I just picked a color, and I went up to our gradient, and instead of going foreground to transparent, I picked This one, I think it was that one, okay? Where if I pick a color, it, it puts the color to white, okay? Because then it gives me opacity. So I just used a different gradient there, that's all I did. Okay, then if you notice, it's squished on this side over here. So I'm gonna go up to edit, and we've touched on this a little bit, and I'm gonna go to just, all your edit transform tools are under edit transform, okay? And I'm gonna go to distort, or we could go to, um, actually, let's go to distort. And I'm going to come in here. i got to get on the right layer. I'm going to come in here. Here's my camera layer. And I'm going to go edit, transform, distort, and pull that up a little bit so it's not so out of, out of uh, perspective. It's, it's forced perspective right now because the camera was too close. And then the first thing I usually do with these, so let's go grab this one real quick. I'm going to do something you shouldn't do. I'm going to use the object selection tool and see what I get. Okay, there we go. Alright, so it's separated here. Now you can see it did a funky job right there, it didn't catch that. Use your pen tool. Okay, let me get rid of this. 
resources oh. are available to help. Path. It only takes a moment to reach out. And I might have some so spots, like when I do the pin tool, I might have some spots where it um it doesn't quite get it really clean. This is really soft, blurry, out of focus. It's it's been set that way, so I'd have to unset that. I might just to clean up little things, like if I have a little bit, I don't know, maybe like that. I come in here maybe with my um, eraser, make sure that I control how hard or soft this edge is. I don't want it quite that soft. I want to get a little harder edge. And I could clean up some of this stuff. Now look, <clears throat> see that didn't erase it? Because my opacity right here is at 17. I want that at 100. And I can go hold shift and then click and I can get pretty straight lines on that. And just kind of go in and clean that up. I don't like, no, I wouldn't usually use it <clears throat> for this much cleanup. Usually it's just a little bit, like maybe this. Kind of clean that up and you got to get it cleaned up does that make sense okay then i'm going to come over here and you could probably use your spot tool here you can use your spot tool your clone stamp tool but here's what i'm going to do i'm going to get my polygon lasso tool because i want to work on this part first so we've talked about if i put a, a selection around something Photoshop's only going to let me work in that selection, which is what I want right now, because I don't want it going outside of this. Okay, so let's try the let's try the spot the Okay, so I'm going to that. And then I like to go right up to this corner edge right there. Oops, didn't work. So. I might go back to my clone stamp tool, get it smaller, and just kind of go, I'm going to sample it right there, and then I just want to go along this edge and clean up that edge right to the, right to the edge of the corner. Now be careful that you don't start repeating shapes if you're using your clone stamp tool. Now I'm going to go Command or Control D, and that's sloppy, but I want to get that cleaned up where this schmutzy stuff is gone. Let's see if I can do this one with the and I like to put that selection right there so I can go right up to that edge, but so far it's okay. You can see here we've got problems. So I want to clean all this stuff up, okay? So I put something that's totally unrepresentative of the product onto you guys. Okay, so pretend this is a decent selection, okay? All this stuff here wasn't here. And that I've already gone edit. Transform, distort. So distort just lets you free distort it. Okay, I'm just pulling that up so it's not so wacky. Um, let's go. Oh, and by the way, you guys, I'm gonna show you a little trick. Um, that's the same thing as what we did with that clouds and the girl. It's a layer mask trick. Okay, so let's go here. Now here's something I do usually. I go the only. Okay, so this whole image is black and white. Okay. Now part of the problem with this is because they blew out this side, you're getting some warm, warmth over here and then it cools off over here. So you've got this, this big drastic um, temperature shift in the um, image, which I don't want. I want it to be even. So if I, and I might want to play with this lens, okay, because that's the one thing with color in it. So I'm going to go to my elliptical marquee tool. I'm going to drag it over here and I'm going to make a selection. And the trick here is, is that I can hold the space bar and I can move that selection until I can get it in a pretty good spot. I gotta adjust it. Let's just say that's good. I'm gonna go make sure I'm on the right path or on the right layer. I'm gonna go Control C, Control V. So now, and it pastes it right back where it was. So there it is right there. And the reason I do that is because the rest of this image is black and white. So in order to get rid of this problem where I have um, warmth on one side and, and cool, it's almost going green on my screen a little bit. Um, I'm going to go up here to uh, image adjustments and to our hue saturation and I'm just going to drag the hue saturation all the way to the left and I just got rid of any color in it, okay, because I don't really need it, it's a black and white image. If I want to add some sort of temperature to it, I'll add it, okay. What I'm trying to do is get a baseline control here so I can start to clean this thing up, okay. So. Now, another thing I might, let's do this. Let's say that I put my backdrop in it. And I'm gonna drag both of these things up at the same time. 
And again, pretend this isn't a sloppy thing. And then I'm going to add another layer and I'm going to put it down below everything. And I'm going to go, let's pick a color, let's go... Man, I don't like these colors. Okay, so let's just go to here and I'll adjust it. And let's go up to our, back to our gradient. And I'm going to give it a seamless backdrop, okay? So right there. So this goes color to white, but it's opaque. If I do it here, I'd have to put another layer of white and all that, and I don't want to do that. So then I'm going to go and just give it a little seamless backdrop, okay? Now, up here, I've got to clean some things up. And then also, now here's a little trick that I always do for this that works pretty good. I will make a selection here on another layer because I want to I want to try and work non-destructively and, and make a better selection than I'm making right now. I'm not making a great selection here. But I just want to tone down this, this part here because if you look at it, and I would make a decent selection here. This is really not a good selection. I would never use this to make this kind of a selection. I'd use the pen tool. But it should be okay for this. Okay, so if you look at it here, it's kind of cruddy looking in here. Okay, it just doesn't look very nice. It's also blown out. So I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to go to my grayscale. I'm just going to pick, let's say that. I don't want a super dark grayscale. And then I'm going to take my um, uh, gradient. I'm going to switch it back to this one, trans or color to transparent. And then I'm just going to drag a gradient right here. And what that's going to do here, when I put it on multiply, so let's go a little darker. Now. A little darker. So you can see it starts to clean that up a little bit, okay? So what it's doing is, is what you were seeing before is all that dust and particles and all that kind of stuff. And when I put that on it, which is gray, which is the same thing you can use for like a shadow value, um, it sort of fills that in and just evens it out on the multiply overlay. Does that make sense? And that multiply overlay will make more sense as we go along. All these overlays will, okay? But especially multiply, we're going to use that quite a bit later, okay? So I'm just laying a gray over it to kind of even it out. Over here, it's not too bad, so I'd probably just leave that for now. And then here, I might use my overlays to try something else here. I'm going to go... Because this is way too blown out, this, color, this lighting on this side. And the reason I'm using a gradient is because I don't want to put a solid color down. So I put a solid color down. It's going to go over here into the dark and it's going to look weird. So I'm just going to go, I'm going to use the same thing. And I'm just going to pull it over. And I can darken it or lighten it if I need to with my levels. And you can see how it's starting, it's on multiply. So that's why it's working, okay? This should be on its own layer, by the way. I think I put it on the same layer as the other one. Yeah, I did. Don't do that, put it on its own layer. So I could go here and go, okay, I want to pull that down a little. I want to keep this, hang on, let's do this. You can see I made a lousy selection. So it's showing this over here, which I don't want right there. Okay, I'm going to go on multiply. And see how it starts to even that lighting out a little bit? Yeah? So maybe there. What's the question? Uh, what about all the uh, screw just to the right? This here? Uh, yeah, yeah, like what else, right there. That. I might do the same thing, I might knock this guy. What I'm trying to do is get this lighting to where I can do the lighting. Okay, so this guy was this close to it, and he went boom, bam, big flash. It blew the whole side of the thing out. It distorted the, the, the perspective, um, you know, so on and so forth, right? This, this screw, I would have to come in here and totally clean up. I might do it the same way, I'd try it. So I might go, you know, maybe I can just kind of come, because I want to actually just get rid of this really heavy duty side like that because the problem when I get a specular specular highlight like on a on something like that is that your eye tends to go to maximum contrast I don't want your eye going right here you know what I mean your eyes kind of going right there because that's maximum contrast so let's put this on another layer let's just fill it edit fill 
foreground color. Try the same trick. Let's see if it'll get. It knocked it down. It looks like a little bit. Yeah, it knocked it down quite a bit. So I would, and then I would go in there and clean up that screw a little bit. But you can see now it's knocked it down, so it's not so prominent. Does that make sense? And then I'd go here and do the same thing here probably I did over here. But before I do any of that, I would go up and clean all this dirty stuff off of here, okay? Now here's another simple thing. We talked briefly about your Dodge, your smudge tool, which we don't really worry about right now. Your blur tool, which means I can go into certain areas and just blur little areas like with my brush. Um, and then over here, you have your Dodge tool, which again, if I go, That should be making it much lighter. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm on the wrong. Layer, so. Let's go here. So my dodge tool, you can see it lightens things up, okay? Which I don't want right now. And then this one, the burn tool, will darken things up, as you can see, right? Those are th those can be handy, but you got to be careful with them because sometimes they'll get um, they'll just make your image really dirty. But like right here, where there's this this little uh, rubber insert right there. That, I might be able to go, I want to tell it to go, let's try in the mid-tone. And you can see it just darkened it up and cleaned it up kind of nice. And what it's doing is it's just looking for, what it's really doing is it's looking for, there's a really obvious, um, this is dark and this is lighter. So we can find it pretty easy. Now sometimes you have to set it to what it what you want it to go after the shadows, the midtones, or the highlights. Okay, I just have it on midtones right now. Now if I go over here and try and use it <clears throat> with this ME Super thing, number one, I have to clean up all that right there. But if I try and use it here, see how it's, it's catching everything around it? I don't want that. So it's just not being sensitive enough there. So let's try shadows. That's a little better. Yeah, that's not too I'm starting to pick some. It sort of worked there. Now, the reason was, is I told it to darken the shadows, okay? So it went after the darker, um, the darker uh, value. Does that make sense? Okay, so always look at your control bar up here. I also have it on exposure at 50%. If I put that up higher, it's gonna darken everything more. If I put it up, you're gonna see this in different languages up here. It's gonna say exposure. It might say like threshold, it might say different things, but really what that's saying is how much of this do you want? Do you want it really powered on or do you want to pull it back and make it more subtle? Does that make sense? Okay, now another thing <clears throat> is on this lens, I'd probably want to control this lens. Right now it has a lot of color in there, which you know, might be fine. Or I could go with the idea of going, well, let's go, this room is flooded with this you know, this, let's say this light is bouncing around because that's the only color in this image. And I might come in here and unify this whole lens right here since it's on it's on its own layer. I'm gonna go up here to image. Adjustments, hue saturation. And then I'm just gonna click the little button that puts this color in my foreground swatch onto this object and it'll make it monochromatic. 2021 is the okay, see how it changed it? Okay, so now I can decide, do I want to saturate that a little more, a little less? I could also go, well, maybe that's not the color I want. And I can grow through the spectrum. A lot of times I come out, I kind of like a blue. Because the blue is a complement of the orange and it's just an easy pop. Okay, does that make sense? So I'm getting a little bit of a warm, cool thing. And then, I, you know, and when I separated this, by the way, I would have cut this little part out. You know, and look, you can see how ratty a selection it made there. It's really a mess, okay? Which is partly just, this is a low-res photograph, it's a really bad photograph, you know, there's a lot of reasons for it. Um, and then, I could even get tricky if I want, probably, and go, you don't have to do this, but... You just need better internet. AT&T Fiber delivers a faster internet experience with 25 times faster upload speeds than cable. Visit att.com slash get fiber. Limited go availability in select areas. Based on internet 1000 wired upload connection speed first major cable providers one gig service with uploads of 35 megabits per second. Restricted to clock. And I could start doing hey, things red. like bouncing the light around onto the top. With the perfect fudge top surfaces like that just a little bit. See what I'm saying? 
If I put it right there on top of that, I could also do it over here a little bit. And what that starts to do is take this room color and bounce it around here, which is going to go a long way towards this not looking like it's cut out in a false environment. Does that make sense? So if I take a picture of a car, a red car, and I go, I'm going to put this car, I'm going to composite it into this beautiful street scene, leafy street scene with a big blue sky, right? When I drop that car in there, I'm probably going to cool the, the, the hood, the roof, and the, t and the trunk off, okay? Let's say it's a red car. I'm going to cool that red off on the top because that blue is affecting, it's reflective. Does that make sense? And that's going to help me get, and then if there's like a green uh, bush next to the car, I might reflect a little of that into the car, a little bit of the green. So I'm pulling the colors around it into ambient light, reflective light, all that kind of stuff. Does that make sense, you guys? Yeah, because you have to learn how to do that. Otherwise, it's going to look like what you see all the time where you just see these hacked, composited things with hard edges and all that kind of stuff. And it's like, that doesn't look believable. It just looks like you hacked all this stuff together. It looks like you took an X-Acto knife out and cut it out of a magazine and slapped it on something else, okay? Now, another thing I can do at some point, this, this little frizz down here is driving me crazy. Anyway. So I'm going to take, I'm not going to ask you to fix this one problem because it's just overboard, but I just want you to get this little trick. Okay, so I'm taking my camera, I'm making a copy of it, and I'm going to put it underneath my original. I'm going to call it reflection. And then I'm going to go up here again to edit where we just were, transform, and I'm going to go flip vertical, okay? So I just took that camera and I flipped it vertical. I'm going to put the edge right here and kiss this edge. But you can see it doesn't line up, right? So then I'm going to go back up to edit, transform. Only this time I'm going to go skew. And what that's going to do is let me just pull this up like that. Now, normally what I would do is I would fix this lens, okay? I would take this lens probably and reflect it back. I'm not going to ask you to do that. It's, not, it's just not that important right now. And then I'm going to go make me a layer mask. And then I'm gonna go back up here to um, my gradients and I'm gonna go to this black and white one. And then I'm gonna go on one. Yeah. I'm gonna go to the other one, because it goes the other way, I think. Yeah. So what I'm doing here. Yeah, there you go. So, we, and then I'm going to probably knock it down a little bit with my opacity. You're getting a less strong image than I am here. And then, that's why I didn't fix the lens, because sometimes I can get away with it. And then, um, so what I just did is, remember when we used the layer mask and you could use your black to paint things out, and then your white to paint things in? I just did the same thing with a gradient, because it's black and white. So the black reveals and the white conceals. So I just did the same thing, only with a gradient. Okay, so it gives me that nice, smooth, reflective transition, okay? And then I could take this, I'm gonna make a copy of this, um, see if this will work. I'm gonna make another copy of my original, and this time I'm gonna call it Shadow. I'm gonna pull it there. And then I'm gonna go, again, you're gonna see this all the time. You've seen it on your Paths palette where I can Control click the, the thumbnail and I can get a selection. So I just selected my camera. I'm going to go up here to um, my grade and I'm going to go. I'm going to fill it with my foreground color. There it is. And I'm going to try to see if I get lucky. I'm going to go back up to edit, transform. I'm going to try just distort here. I'm just going to pull this down like it's getting a cast shadow here. And again, this is an exercise I'm not worried about. I, I, I want it to look, I want you to get the idea of how to correct these things and start using your tools correctly. But I'm also not going to get totally crazy with it. All right, so let's go again, let's go back up here to 
multiply. And, and the reason I do multiply, now another thing I can do is I can go to my levels and go, well, that's just too dark. And I can just pull it back to about there. One of the reasons I use multiply is it marries it to the, to the layer beneath it and makes it transparent so you can see, you can see my reflection through the shadow now. Does that make sense? Okay, I don't want an opaque shadow. And then I'm gonna go up here and this is kinda new. So we're gonna go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and then this is just a slider. So if you look at the, watch the thing here, and you have to have it clicked on preview so you can see what it's doing. I don't even know why they have that as an option. And I'm just softening up that, um, that shadow by dragging the um, slider a little bit. Does that all make sense? And then we've got to get the whole thing. It's still a little pinched on this side, actually. Um, and another thing you can do, OK, so this is something you should know. If you go here and you go image rotation, horizontal, it flips the whole image, OK, which really tells me how pinched that side is. Or if I go image, image rotation, and then it has a uh, flips vertical. It flips the whole canvas, okay? So just so you know, when I'm flipping these things, I'm using the Edit Transform tool, and that will just flip the object that's on that layer. It won't flip the whole image. Does that make sense? Now, where this comes in handy, the image thing, if I'm working on creating an image, it's really good to go flip these things horizontal, and it'll reveal to you what's wrong with it. Like on this case, you can really see how this side over here is too pinched, okay? So what I actually usually do is I'll flip it and when I'm adjusting the um, perspective so I can really get a sense of, you know, if it's right or wrong. And then I'll just go back to the original. And that's just, um, if you guys have been in drawing or something, they probably had you look at your drawings in a mirror, correct? That's why you do that, okay? It's the same thing. If you flip something, it gives you a perspective of it that's not, it changes your perspective for a little while and you can see all the things that are wrong with it and out of balance with it. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's what we're doing, okay? So the first thing you gotta do is get it separated out. Pen tool, not object selection tool. Yeah? 